physical game. Uh, they really tried to control the tempo of the game by slowing the game down. And uh, I thought that, um, you know, offensively we kept pushing the envelope. And I think eventually it paid off for us. Um, I think our ability to finish in the fourth quarter the way we did, whether it was get a couple stops on defense um, and have a couple really successful drives offensively, great perseverance by our team to hang in there and keep fighting and sort of overcome hard. So, um, and there was a lot of adversity in the game. Some of it we created, some of it they created. Uh, but the one thing we did is we responded and we kept playing in, in the game. I think looking ahead here this week, uh, we need to focus on a lot of fundamental, technical uh, execution at every position whether it's offensive line, defensive backs, it doesn't really matter what, what position it is. I think there's a lot of things that we need to, uh, that we can fundamentally execute with a little more consistency. Uh, and that's certainly going to be the focus in terms of what we try to get accomplished um, this week. Um, you know, you guys got the offensive players of the week, uh, injuries, uh, I think Ross will be out you know, for sure for this game, and then probably a medical decision after that as to where he is. Uh, Mink is going to be probably, you know, day to day, you know, this week as to what he can do and, and how he sort of can respond to this sort of lingering injury. Uh, the team that we play, Mercer, is a very well coached team. Um, they do a good job. They know what they want to do. They know how to do it. They do a good job of executing. and. You know, they've, they've done a pretty good job all year long, and um, obviously for us, we always want to technically do what we have to do to get our players in the best position to be able to have a chance to be successful in the game and use this as an opportunity for us to go out and develop confidence in our execution uh, by the knowledge and experience that we gain in this particular game. We'll start here in front with John Zener. Even, even this late in the season, can, you, can a team kind of grow? You guys were challenged from start to finish. The state really kind of played well throughout the – can you grow from that even this late in the season? Well, I think you can always grow. I think you should always be looking forward, uh, looking ahead, at, you know, what you need to do to continue to improve, uh, to develop team chemistry, togetherness, um, people's roles changes, guys change what they have to do. but. Uh, it's sort of a work in progress all the time to try to continue to grow and um, develop as a team. And I think that's certainly what uh, our focus needs to be if we want to finish the way we, we, we'd like to finish. Back with Cecil. Uh, Coach, you spoke after the game about Josh Jacobs, but um, if you could just expand on what having him at 100% and, and available does to the, to the backfield rotation and to your options on offense? Well, I think Josh is a, kind of an easy guy to create a role for because of his versatility as a player. Um, we certainly need to use him more uh, now that he's healthy, and he certainly was healthy in that game and very explosive and probably changed the game a little bit for us with his energy and enthusiasm. And he's always been a great competitor, and we're going to continue to try to expand his role so that you know, he can be more productive for us. We're not displeased with anybody in terms of how they play, you know, at that position. Uh, but we, 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 we would like to get him more involved in what we're doing. We'll stay over here with Charlie. After you in the film, how did you think that J.C. Hassenauer did filling in for us at left guard? J.C. did a nice job in the game. Um, and we, we, we have always rotated guys a little bit in the offensive line. JC also has to be the backup center, so he has to do sort of dual duty regardless of what his circumstance is relative to playing guard. So we certainly need to continue to develop that depth and uh, make the kind of changes up front that we might need to make so that we have that kind of depth if uh, something else happens to the offensive line or if uh, we have an opportunity to play other players. Uh, at different positions because that may be something we need to do down the road. We'll come back over here to Michael. Uh, this Mercer team played Auburn uh, very close to three quarters over here. 
is, is that game too early in the season, or is there still a lot that can, that can be taken from that? No, I think there's a lot that they can take that can be taken from that. I think any time you play teams, especially at this stage <laughs> stage in the season when you've been playing SEC games for how many weeks in a row now, um, it becomes a little more difficult for guys to have the right psychological disposition uh, to not be playing a conference game, regardless of who that might be. Uh, but I think it's important for our guys to focus on what we need to do as a team to improve and get better. We have players who need to get experience. Uh, we need more players to be able to play winning football. We have a lot of guys playing different roles. And uh, I think this is an opportunity for us to sort of capitalize on efficiency and performance for our team. And I think we need to always have respect for whatever team that we're playing. Uh, that certainly should not determine the standard of how you play in terms of who you're playing. Uh, it should be the standard that you set for yourself in terms of how you want to play. And I certainly think that that's going to be important to us to continue to try to develop momentum as we go through the, the, and finish the season. The back with Simone. Coach, after the Mississippi State win, your press conference, you walked up to Miss Terry and kind of greeted her, and she was clapping for you. It was really sweet. The video kind of went viral. What is it like to have such a support from your wife through the ups and downs of coaching and just through your entire career like that? Well, I think that's the thing that you got to have appreciation for. Um, you know, I think about sometimes when we had a, you probably don't even know what an old rusted out Volkswagen is. So, Fastback type, you know, like 19, whatever model that would have been, um, 60s of some, some sort, and go through the struggles that you go through uh, personally and professionally, and to have a, a partner that has been supportive and an asset to the organization in every way um, is something that is really appreciated. And, you know, she's been a great partner, and I, I don't know why she puts up with me, but I'm very fortunate. We'll stay over here with Chandler. After reviewing the film, how did you think both Keith Holcomb and Dylan Moses played inside in Sean Dion's absence? Well, I, I think that we, first of all, I think that stability of the defense uh, has to be created through confidence in the signal caller. And we did that for a great part of the game. And there were times when we had breakdowns that uh, were costly. So uh, I think we all need to have the sort of attitude that we need to do more to try to improve uh, our ability to be consistent in how we play uh, as a defensive team totally, um, but starting from inside out. Come back on the left with Ryder. How does the fact that Jalen has only committed one turnover this year, um, you know, speak to his again poise, and also, um, you know, just the the fact that that allowed you to stay, you know, in, in a position to win the game, uh, especially on Saturday. The fact that because of the limited possessions you had. Well, I think the key to the drill in any game is taking care of the ball. The first thing we talked about in every game that we play is the ball, the ball, the ball. Some players have a hard time putting that as a priority. Uh, they sometimes put the priority in making a play, uh, which means they think they can squeeze it in there when it's really not open and it ends up getting picked off or they're trying to gain some extra yards and not taking care of the ball and it ends up being a fumble or um, the ball gets busted out from the back or whatever. So uh, that's something that we really emphasize with our team. It's something that Jalen is very conscious of and has done a really good job of. And, uh, to probably learn from some of his past experiences of uh, taking care of the ball and how important that is. So uh, I think it's critical and it will continue to be critical that uh, our turnover ratio is a positive thing for us. We've got to get more turnovers on defense and we've got to continue to take care of the ball on offense, which we've done a really good job of so far this year. In the middle with Taryn. How much has the freshman stepped up and really made a difference this season? Uh, we've probably played more freshmen this year than um, most teams. And I think for the most part, those guys have provided a tremendous amount of depth and in some cases uh, filled in very admirably um, for 
guys when they're called on, whether it's on special teams or whatever their role has been uh, as contributors of the team. So uh, we're happy that we played as many guys as we played, and we're happy with the way those guys have played. So uh, I think it's a positive for us. And in most cases, we've been able to play them enough to enhance their development, which is always sort of the priority when you play a young player is are we going to play the guy enough so it enhances his development in practice every week and also the game experience that he gains. Up front here with Dwayne. Coach, you talked about before hating to lose, you hate to lose. Jalen said the same thing a couple of weeks ago. He hates to lose more than he loves to win. What's it like having your leader have that same mentality as you? Well, I, I think that all great competitors, not that I'm saying I'm a great competitor by any stretch of the imagination, but I think uh, there's a certain amount of motivation that comes from what you want to accomplish and what you want to do uh, and the standard that you want to do it to. But there's always that sort of competitive spirit that you want to come out on top and you want to um, be successful. And obviously in our sport, um, when you lose, you, you know, it's a sort of a reality check of, I didn't really do that. I didn't really get that done. Uh, we didn't do the things that we needed to do in a lot of ways. And uh, although we try to stay focused on the process around here, what we have to do to be successful, uh, I think from a competitive standpoint, it helps when, um, you know, guys don't, don't like the feeling of not being successful. Front here with Mark. How do you think the uh, linebackers and safeties did against some of their RPOs on Saturday? Um, well, they didn't run a lot of RPOs. Um, they ran a lot more really tough play action passes. They had us on the first play of the game. In the back end, we didn't respond to it the right way. But for the most part, I thought that uh, our issues were more on third down man-to-man -man coverage, not tackling well, not playing bunch passes very well, uh, all things that we need to work on and get corrected. Back on the other side with Chris Walsh. What kind of development has Raekwon Davis uh, made, especially in, in um, just keeping to his assignments and doing what he's supposed to do? Well, I think he's done a good job. He's a very conscientious guy, and um, he wants to do and please the coach in every way that he can. He plays hard. He's very competitive. Uh, gives a lot of effort and he's played with a, a lot of toughness and I think he's made a lot of progress throughout the course of the year and we, we need to have um, more guys up front probably play with his kind of tenacious sort of attitude. Uh, I think that's what you'd like to see your whole defense play with. In the back with Joe. Hey coach, uh, after the game Saturday Jalen said that he was a reminder or was thinking to some degree about last year's Clemson game. How much do you think that game has uh, made this year's team mentally tougher? The guys that experienced that game. Well, I think that was a tough loss for any player involved in that game. A lot on the line. Uh, you work all year long to try to put yourself in that position, and you come up a little short. Uh, I think that's something that you never forget. So, if that's something that um, helps guys sort of not want to have that feeling again. Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, but I also think that we want our players to be very positive about how they approach what's in front of them and the opportunity that they have in terms of what's in front of them uh, is a positive motivation as to what this team can accomplish, the standard that we want to play to, and what they can do better to do a little more to help our team be successful. Okay, last two, Scott and then Alex. Nick, I know we talk about identity a lot, um, but I was wondering if, and I know this is part of identity, part resiliency that this team seems to have had to go through this whole year with injuries and everything, kind of encompassed Saturday night getting through that. Have you identified the part resiliency of this team? Is it more special than you've seen in a while? or? Well, I, I've been pleased with the way the guys have responded. One of the things that we talked about before um, this last game was, can you thrive on hard? Knowing that you're going to be in difficult circumstances and you're going to have hard things happen, whether it's in life, 
uh, or in a competitive sport, and are you going to respond the right way to that and look at that as an opportunity to thrive uh, in a situation? And you know, everybody can give more, everybody can do more, everybody can. Uh, but really, we want you to execute and do your job in critical situations when your best is needed. And obviously, I was really proud of the way our team did that down the stretch in that particular game, so that gave them the best opportunity to be successful. But uh, I think that kind of perseverance is always really important, and that comes from you know your heart in terms of how bad you want to accomplish something and how bad you want to do it. And are you putting that first, or are you putting yourself first? Because you know, when we surrender all of us to what's not what we want, it's always about us. And when you start putting yourself first and not what you want to accomplish as a team, uh, then you usually have some issues, and uh, that's not been the case with many of our players. We'll finish up right here with Alex. Last two games, the defense has allowed over 150 yards rushing per game. What do you attribute to some of those issues, and what can you all work on this week you know, moving down the stretch? Well, I, I think that you know when you make when the, you have changes, whether you make changes or whether those changes are inevitable because of players missing or whatever, uh, those things are all things that um, have some impact on how you're able to play and what you're able to do. Whether it's how you communicate, uh, guys getting in the right things, doing the right things, not making mental errors, or having the confidence that every player out there is going to be able to do what he needs to do effectively. Uh, and I think we need to play the run better, but I also think we played two teams that um, were committed to being able to run the ball. And they ran the ball better than we'd like. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you do the stats on this last game, I think they had, what, 3.8 or 3.5 yards of carry or something like that, which is not really that bad. Um, so they just did it a lot. And what creates those situations, and I'm going to go back to it again, which nobody seems to have the same concern about, is when you have them third and ten, you have them third and seven, you have them third and eight, you have them third and nine, when you play teams that run the ball like that, you got to get off the field. I just don't give them a new set of downs to go run it again and again and again and keep sort of, you know, three and four and five yards and get to depth. Um, and when you have teams that can create extra gaps because a quarterback runs, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. Could we have executed better and done better on some of those things? Absolutely. Do they have a good scheme and a good plan to run the ball, shrink the game, play slow? Yes, they did. And the key to that was just like when we started, that you can't give them extra, extra possessions. Um, we go three and out right off the bat. I jump over the shield, give them another possession. Well, that possession now goes for 10 or 12 plays, changes the field position. All right, so all these things contribute to giving the other team more opportunities, not getting off the field on third down, giving them that extra possessions, whether it's penalties or whatever. Um, so. All these things sort of go hand in hand in how, how do you stop the run. But stopping the run to me is more about how many yards per play they get than how many yards they gain. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Right, thank you.